It's Feature Friday, and it's all about LSU versus Jackson State women's basketball, the highest ranked CU in the tournament, right? And I have to get my guy, Sanders, writer for the Louisiana State basketball team, in here to let us know about the other side. Oh, yeah, it's locked on HBCU. Play my music. <laughs> on HBCU, your daily podcast covering HBCU sports, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's going on, family? Welcome back to another episode of the Locked On HBCU Podcast, your number one daily one-stop shop for everything HBCU athletics, Monday through Friday, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. And I, of course, am Darian Gray, a.k.a. the Mouth of the South, Texas Southern alum and former TSU Herald Sports editor. Thank you for going on this journey with me, making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day day and today's feature friday and it's all about jackson state versus lsu we're breaking down this game it's a big time matchup three versus 14 and you have to know your enemy so i have the women's basketball lsu women's basketball lead writer dylan stand is better known as dilly to come on here and tell us about the other side kim Moki has a phenomenal pedigree as a coach as a player your experience with her first year in lsu what is it about her that makes her so great, specifically on the sidelines? She makes all of these players feel like they can do anything, really. Um, she, I, I've seen her on the sidelines. I've seen her in practice. Like she is the, she is a really hard coach, but will be really supportive. Like. She'll yell at you if you do one thing wrong, but if you do one thing right, she's acting like you you did the best thing in the world. Like she's she's really supportive while being really hard, and it's it's really like just having one conversation with her, you'll want to like tie up the laces on the on on the basketball shoes and go out there on the court. Like you just want to play for her. She's awesome. Yeah, and when you look at it, man, she came all the way from Baylor came back home how were they able to get that done like you take somebody work from somewhere where they have so much success at Baylor I know it's the home state love and everything but what else went into bringing her to LSU uh well we just had St. Patrick's Day to say that the main thing about St. Patrick's Day is the color green and mm -hmm. that's <laughs> the color green is is what brought Mulkey home uh she got she got I mean she got paid well and uh she got to come home which is uh you know a win-win for her yeah and we've seen scott scott woodard he'll he'll pay he's not afraid yeah. to, to yeah. dish out some big money we've seen it in the lsu football team with brian kelly so we know that he'll go big big name hunting right yeah yeah and with her that was definitely a big name how has let's just take out what she's done before take out the pedigree and specifically mm -hmm. focus here what has she done to transform this LSU women's basketball team? Um, I think attendance this year, the total attendance was more than the last four seasons combined or something like that, something crazy. That is crazy. Um, and it's that, and it's because she cares. And she goes and puts in the legwork to get people to come. She'll yell at you and call you an idiot if you don't come to LSU women's basketball games. Like, I I asked her, I was like, I was like, one of her first days, I was like, I was, I mean, you know, obviously I write for the student paper. So I was like, what do you want to tell students, like, to get them to come out of the game? She basically was like, well, if you don't come, you're an idiot because we're going to have a lot of fun and the game's going to be great. And she makes you feel bad if you don't come see the team. Uh, and it, it worked. She she yelled at people to start like at her in her radio show because people weren't showing up. She you know she insulted their intelligence. <laughs> and it worked. <laughs> but no, she really does just yeah. And and obviously the name and the Hall of Fame kind of really makes it easier to to want to go out to the games. But she does put in the work and she does try 
and it paid off because the games this year were so crazy. Yeah, and her Hall of Fame career as a player is something that I mean, it'll never be ignored. It'll probably always be at the forefront of the conversations about her. Mm -hmm. And she was a point guard. How have you seen her impact from her coaching impact the guards of LSU? Uh, she has taken Kayla Pointer uh, specifically under her wing and just helped her blossom into being uh, a second team All American. Uh, but I mean, obviously, the guards this year uh, are crazy. So it's a really good mark to be able to put, to find your name on that list, like with you know the Page Backers, Caitlin Clark's. Um, but yeah, she she. Yeah, she really, it, it's been like from day one, she has in, imbued her wisdom on onto Kayla Pointer and the rest of the guards, but really Kayla Pointer was like her, her project. And it's worked out really well because Kayla's uh, had a great, great year. Yeah, Kayla was phenomenal this year. Um, I want to rewind a little bit, take the clock back. Last year's Baylor squad, who Kim Mulkey mm -hmm. was coaching, how do they compare to this year's LSU team? Um... So I will say this about this LSU team and that Baylor team. Baylor had more talent. LSU is not the most talented team in the tournament, uh, but they they do the same things because uh, Kim Mulkey's coaching just coaches solid basketball. She doesn't do anything crazy. She um, yeah, she doesn't do anything crazy. She'll build the team around what needs to be done, and she's not going to force you to do anything. Um, but I will, I will say the the main difference is that Baylor just had more talent because she had more time to you know build her own team. This isn't her team; uh, she's taking over from a lot of the players that were left over from uh, Nikki Fargus. Uh, so, including Kayla Pointer, who, fun fact, is Nikki Fargus's uh, niece. <laughs> uh, so. So it's kind of crazy that she stuck around, uh, but I'm very happy that she did. But yeah, it, it's just about a, a talent level, but that doesn't take any way, anything away from what this team has done. Yeah, and the reason I hammer that, you know, or just really ask that question, I guess I didn't hammer it, but the reason I ask that question is because Jackson State faced Baylor in the first round of the tournament last year, and now they're facing LSU this year. So they're facing Kim Mokey coach teams back-to-back do you think there's some things they can look back at that film and, you know, just be a little bit more prepared for? Uh, I mean, yeah, just the, uh, just the, her defensive style, man to man, like you, you know what to expect uh, on defense at least. Cause she, she's going to have the same amount of defense, same style of defense, but I'd say on offense uh, it's more, it's going to be all in the paint. <laughs> it, it, I mean, some, some uh, mid range from Jalen Cherry, but it's gonna be it's gonna be mostly in the paint. So they just need to 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 protect the paint. But yeah, on defense, she she kind of does run the same kind of man to man defense that she uh, she's known for. All right, so you just heard him break down all the impact that Kim Mulkey has had, whether it's on attendance, whether it's on the players, specifically the guards, and then also the similarities between her Baylor squad last year and the LSU squad this year, both of which Jackson State is going to be facing. Now we're going to go forward and talk specifically about what LSU do on the court that is so good. What is their ceiling? But first, I want to tell you about Built Bar, because Built Bar is the best protein bar on the market, bar none. And if you're going to be at that game, if you're going to be at any game in an NCAA tournament, then Built Bar is an essential snack for you. Because look, I'll be trying to get things that are going to hold me over for a little bit. And Built Bar does that. My personal favorite, and I'll come on here, and I might tell you every single time I tell you about Built Bar that I really do like a blueberry muffin. I don't know how many times I have to tell it before somebody says, hey, I'm out to the South. I tried out that Built Bar, that Built Bar, that blueberry muffin, and you ain't lying. I know I'm not, but it's okay. It's some time. But it'll, it'll come to you eventually. 17 grams of protein, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs. And it's the same way with the Built Bar Puffs. I have no idea how you can have marshmallows, covered in chocolate and still have all of the health benefits that you want it's tasty it's healthy it's absolutely no conversation go to built.com and use the promo code locked for 15 percent off your offer 
rolling on today's episode of Locked On HBCU. Thank you for making us your first listen of the day every day. And make sure you're checking out the Bracket Breakdown Show. March Madness is here. March Madness is here, but that don't mean that it's too late for you to get informed and understand everything about it. They still have first round matchups going down. Chris Gordy, Andy Patton, Lee Sterling, giving you everything that you could possibly need and want when you're looking at March this year. Now, Dilly is still here, and we're talking about what does LSU do on the court that's really good? How about their how about their, their front court versus the back court? And how about their eight-game win streak that they went on before the SEC tournament? Let's continue looking back a little bit, but I want to look at LSU just so I can get an understanding because a lot of these players have you know been here. A couple of these players have been here mm-hmm. for a while. Where where do you see the difference on the court between last year's LSU and this year's LSU? Um, confidence and uh, three point shooting. LSU, I think, as a team last year, shot twenty percent from three, and was just any time they pulled up, you just shook your head because you knew it was not going in. Uh, but now they have like legitimate shooters and legitimately can take a shot. Uh, but it really, it is just all about confidence. She, um, it, it's it's weird to say that just so much because it's like, how much can confidence really do? But that's what Mulkey has imbued into these girls. Like they're the same players, but they're playing that with a whole new, basically sense of life. Um, and yeah, effort and confidence is the biggest change, right? in my opinion. Yeah, They're still the same players. It's funny that you it's funny that you say that because I want to say over the last two, three days, it's kind of been a, a common theme on the show about just how success breeds confidence and confidence breed breeds success and how it's just a continuous cycle. So I completely understand how confidence can reshape how a team, you know, performs and mm-hmm. their performance. They- eight games in a row to end the regular season before the before the, the SEC tournament, excuse me. They won eight games in a row. What do they need mm-hmm. to do to get back to that? And what was going so right that you were able to go on such a long winning streak? Um, Just the guards. The guards were going crazy. Um, they, I want to say in one of the games they scored like – 70 of 75 points came from the three guards that'll be starting or something like that. It was, it was insane. Uh, yeah, it's all going to be Caleb. It all was Caleb Pointer, Ryan Payne, and Alexis Morris. Obviously, Alexis Morris got hurt to end the season, uh, which is what kind of threw him into a funk in the SEC tournament. And Mulkey has stated how she doesn't care about, like, conference tournaments. She doesn't think they're that important. Um because nothing's really going to change about your March Madness in the conference tournament. Um, but towards the end of the season, what really happened, which was shocking to me, is that the bigs stepped up and dominated the last couple of games because Caleb Pointer started to uh, be really inefficient. Uh, Alexis Morris wasn't having as good of games, but the bigs, who were easily the weakest point of the team, for 95% of the season, that left little stretch, they took over and helped them win and were the only reason they were winning games. That, you know, yeah, I think that's kind of interesting. So say the beginning of the stretch, the stretch, it was all guard play. And then you look at mm-hmm. the end of it, it's all the bigs. So going into this NCAA turn, it's going to help out LSU knowing that you now have both sides of the, you know, the backcourt and the front court that can really carry you to victory? Yeah, if they can get solid play out of out of both, um, then they could make a really deep run. Uh, that was kind of the issue all season is that it was usually like a two-person show every night. It would be two, two people doing really well, the rest are just kind of lagging behind or – you know the guards are all doing well. They're kind of lagging behind. The forwards are doing the forwards are doing well, but the guards are lagging behind. So if they can all uh, get together and perform at a high level, uh, it would be really good. It's kind of funny because they all are guard. Uh, you know they're all different sizes, but they all kind of same, play the same. Or they'll they'll either dig into the post or run to the post and then switch out for a mid ranger because they can all they have like four players you can pull up 
from any from any anywhere in the mid range at any time and, and and hit a shot, which is which can be really dangerous because there aren't a lot of teams that focus so heavily on the mid range. Yeah, and one of those players that you were naming and you were saying was so influential to the to the streak at the beginning was mm-hmm. Alexis Morris, and she was injured. She missed the SEC tournament. Is she expected back for this game? Uh, yes. Uh, the way it was, so she got hurt. And then later that day, uh, then after that game, whenever everyone was clearing out, I was walking out and then I ended up walking out as she was getting into her car. So I was able to talk to, I was able to talk to her, which is not very common for college athletics. It's not, you, it's hard to get like one-on-ones with players, uh, but it just happened. I was able to talk to her and she was like, it's not major at all, but uh, as of right now, like they were not, they were never going to play her in the SEC tournament, but like if there was, if it was the NCAA tournament a week ago, she could have played in that. Like she could have played. They just weren't going to rush it. I will. Uh, but yeah, she'll, she'll be back. Impact. I'll go. So how would her impact this game? Um, I mean, that's 14 points a game you're getting back, uh, which is huge. And, not only 14 points, but she is full of energy and the scariest person on that court. <laughs> she is going to, she is going to put the fear of God into some players at some point because she is, uh, she is super, she's super nice, uh, but she is like super intimidating on the court. Uh, you don't want to mess with her. <laughs> she, she just has that energy around her. Um, it's it's pretty fun. Yeah. So. We're going to wrap up with LSU right here before we transition into how they will handle Jackson State, right? And mm-hmm. I just want to know, what is your ceiling for LSU this year in the tournament? Where do you where do you think they will go if they play their absolute best? Um, I think best case scenario is – I mean, best case scenario is Final Four. I think they can get past Stanford in that region. Uh, but that's going to be really hard to do, obviously. But I think they they matched up really well. Um, they they got a really good luck of the draw, I would say, because Stanford, out of the top teams, I think is the team that they match up against the best. They will not. I, I do not see them getting past a Gonzaga or a Caitlin Clark, where uh, or an Iowa. She's the entire team. Caitlin She's Clark's Caitlin Clark. Team. <laughs> yeah, guys. The the the, the are, are, I'm a huge fan of her of her and her game. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't see them be, getting past like a Gonzaga or maybe like a Louisville or um an Iowa where they have where they're able to just pull up and shoot because shooting is easily their weakest. They they cannot guard the three <laughs> very much at all. So if anyone if anyone is a torture. Uh, on their way, they can. Uh, anyone has a chance against them if they can shoot really well because they have not been good against the three. And Mulkey said it after the second game of the season. I have players who just who just literally can't guard it. <laughs> um, and, and hopefully they've improved, and they have improved, but it's still easily the weakest point. Whenever a team gets gets going, is whenever it gets close. We just heard about what LSU does really well as far as on the court and what can they do to win this game but i ain't about to let dylan get out of here without talking about what can jackson state do to win a game could a 14 knocking off a three is not unheard of and i think there's some ways that jackson state can do it but first i want to tell you about bet online because betonline.net is the number one place for all of your sports wagering listen if you want to talk about the ncaa tournament they have that if you want to talk about the nit tournament they have that if you want to talk about nba they have that nfl they have that The MLB, they have that. The NCAA World Series, they have that. How many more things can I tell you? Your favorite Vegas casino games? They have that. It's really that simple. They have everything that you could possibly need. You want to bet on single game? Right there. You want to bet on player performances? They're right there. There are so many things that I could sit up here and I can tell you that betonline.net provides just to hammer home the point. But it's just this simple. They have everything that you need. They have multiple things that you can wager on. So the multiplicity. And just the versatility of them is everything in all of the reasons that you should want to go to betonline.net. It's the fastest and easiest way to wage on all of your favorite sports. 
Bet Online, where the game starts. So we just talked about that three point shooting being, you know, an Achilles heel for the team. If you had to point out one place to exploit LSU, would you? That's the place, three point shooting. Yeah, easily, uh, easily. If you if you can if you can outshoot them because LSU they don't they're not atrocious three point shooters, but in a three point shootout, I feel like most teams could probably take them. Um, and Kayla, Kayla and Alexis can get hot from the from deep. Uh, but it's definitely not like something that they can rely on in the tournament. I'd say if I'd say if you want to if you want to beat them, force them outside and force them to shoot threes, and then obviously run your offense from behind the arc. Well, unfortunately, that's not the greatest place for Jackson State <laughs> as far as the three point shooting. You know, thirty percent, but. Is not the great. They can knock down a couple, knock down a couple threes mm-hmm. per game. But where they do really excel is defensively. And LSU is a really safe basketball team. They don't have a lot of turnovers, right? But yep. Jackson State, they they have some really good pickpockets on that team. Is that something that worries you? That maybe you know, boss might be a problem in this game. Um, I'm not too worried about ball security. Um, I don't know how other, co- I don't know how other, co- I don't focus on rotations for a lot of other colleges, but Kayla, Alexis, and Ryan will probably play all 40 minutes. Uh, they do every game. <laughs> Kay- I think Kayla has played, played the full 40 minutes in every game that wasn't like a 30 point blowout. Like she does not come off the court. Um, and She's really smart with the ball. She doesn't turn up. There really aren't a lot of turnovers. Um, I think they're scared of what will happen to them from Mulkey if they turn the ball over once. So they try their hardest uh, not to. I've been around Mulkey whenever she gets angry. And it is scary. And you don't want it to happen. Uh, Maybe that's exactly the whole reason that they've been doing so well. They're just trying so hard not to upset her. Um, No, I, I don't really think it's that big of an issue. Um, I would say if there was another thing to exploit is to get the bigs in foul trouble because uh the the bigs uh will uh the bigs specifically Fossi and uh they have a lot of foul trouble and she gets into foul trouble very early um just foul trouble in, in all maybe we have a couple forwards there's like two players on the bench that are like actual contributors because everyone plays so many minutes uh the the rest of the bench is kind of young we don't really have any guards uh to throw in there outside of uh uh, we have ryan pan i've been saying ryan pan this whole time jalen cherry is the one that's starting i'm sorry i have gotten them mixed up on and off the court (laughs) all season (laughs) jalen cherry is the one with, with the deadly mid range, uh, and okay. she's going to be starting. Ryan Payne will come off the off the court, and she's uh, she is also off the bench. She's really good, but I'd say foul trouble is the is the best chance Jackson State has at at, at winning foul trouble, and I guess three point shooting. Even though you said it's not the the strongest point, but yeah, getting the team in foul trouble definitely will make Mulkey sweat. Yeah. And I think that 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 battle of the bigs should be interesting because you have Amisha Williams Holiday, Swipe Player of the Year, and she's great in the paint offensively and defensively, right? And I'm excited to see that that battle between her and Autumn Newby. How do you – well, I guess, you know, you might not know everything about Amisha Williams, but as, as far as Autumn's side of it, you know, how do you think that matchup goes? Um, Autumn is – Autumn's really coming to her own. She is – She's one of those players that um, for a for a big, she can she can pull up and shoot. Um, she's not the like a deep range threat, I would say, but she's got a mid range shot, and they will they will they will rely on it on offense and on defense. Um, she's not the anchor, but she can hold her own. I'd say if there's going to be a battle in the paint, it'll be between, it'll be with uh, Faustina Fua. She's the uh, she's the bruiser. Um, she'll fight you, <laughs> and uh, and it'll be fun. Uh, but yeah, like I said, 
she gets in foul trouble very early, uh, very often. And then they'll bring in Hannah Gusters off the court, off the bench, who is another one of those big bruisers. Um, I'd say Newbie is more of like a traditional three or four kind of big. Uh, and uh, although she does, she, she does post up obviously, but I'd say the, the bruiser and the one who will take the brunt of the, uh, of the fight in the post will be Faustine or Hannah Gusters. Okay. And you know, you said Kayla point has been on point, but wow, that was, a, I felt like a, a, a very bad accidental pun. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I promise you it was accidental. You see, but you say Caleb Pointer has been really good for the duration of, of the season, but she got yeah. a struggle with some inefficiency later in the year. Well, what does Jackson State need to do to make sure that she continues to stay inefficient? Um don't foul them. Uh because I think, yeah, there was in in that game where they attributed for 95% of the offense, they shot like 40 free throws between Alexis Morris and Caleb Pointer. They are really good at drawing fouls. Um, so don't uh, f- force them to do that. And then other than that, there's not a ton. You just got to hope she misses that points because she'll get her own shot. She'll find, she'll find an open shot. Um, it's just don't foul. And uh she, yeah, she'll, she'll make mistakes. She's not a perfect player, but, um, yeah, she, they're, they're really good at, at finding the open shot. Um, so I guess just force it out of her hands and then don't foul, uh, because she'll, she'll miss some shots. Just make her uncomfortable kind of, um, but yeah, I'd say definitely don't foul on defense is, is the biggest thing that they can do. And I, I can't let you out of here without asking you this one question. Look, I want the Saints. I know it's locked on HBCU, but I got to ask. I want the Saints to have all of their first round draft picks. If you, <laughs> you know, feel where I'm coming from, uh, yep. I want them yep. to have all of their first round draft picks. Who do the Saints pick in the first round at 18? Ooh, um, probably a defensive tackle, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be upset with it. I wouldn't be upset with it. I'm a, I'm a freak out. I, I, I'm a freak as what I love. Uh, I, I love the bad picks, not bad picks, but the weird picks. Uh, ideally, I think the best player for this team would be Jamison Williams. I'm with it. I'm with it. And that's what he said. Make sure you go check his, his workout on the Saints Wire. Man, you just had a phenomenal four-round draft uh, mock draft. I thought it was great. Jamison Williams was the first-round pick, so I hope that's who it is, right? But mm-hmm. check out his work. You got him on the Saints Wire. You got him on the Re- LSU Reveille. I think I yep. said it right. All right, let's go. I said it right, yep. man. Check them out. And where can they find you on Twitter? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Dilly Sanders, D-I-L-L-Y, like the, uh, like the Bud Light commercial. Yes, indeed. Dilly Dilly, I appreciate you for coming on the show. Of course, man. Thank you very much. No doubt. All right, I couldn't let him get out of here without at least asking the Saints question. I'm sorry. I, I kept it to one, though. I kept it to one just because... It, it, this ain't the place for that. Go check out Locked On Saints with my guy Ross Jackson for that. But I couldn't help it. It's in me. Sorry. But you just heard a phenomenal breakdown about everything about LSU, the phenomenal coach in Kim Mulkey. What do they do on the court that would lead to their success? But if there were some things that would lead to their downfall, what would it be as well? He gave you everything that you could possibly need. That's why I love bringing on the guest. And you know we're going to have great guests on the show at all times. And that's why you should continue making Locked On HBCU your first listen of the day every day. And on Monday's episode, hopefully I'm coming back and telling you about how Jackson State pulled off the great upset. But at the worst, I know that I will be talking about some of the coaching changes in the SWAC basketball landscape. And for your second listen of the day, make sure you're checking out Locked On NFL Draft. Eric Crocker, Ryan Trace are giving you everything that you need for the NFL Draft. It's a big time event, big time coverage. Make sure you're checking it out in the month leading up to it. Free agency been crazy and the NFL Draft will be no different. And in the meantime, in between time, y'all can find me on Twitter at South Exclusives. Until the next time that we hear each other, family, take care, stay blessed. Peace.